Good morning. May be seated. So today's sermon is titled Twisted Tongue. It's not a tongue twister, it's a twisted tongue. The reason why I decided to do this is because the tongue is extremely powerful in, in what it can do. And it is twisted. It, sometimes it can be downright evil as to the things that it, it can do. Um, in fact, when Jesus comes again, his, he's going to have, in Revelation says, that his tongue is going to protrude a double-edged sword. And his word is like a double-edged sword. Just to give you a, an idea. Um, in Matthew, Jesus said in 1511, it is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth. This defiles a person. You know, a lot of times we, we, we say things and whether we mean it or not, but, you know, it, we, we could say some things that could be hurtful and, and could really, I mean, they say, sticks and stones don't break my bones, you know, but words will never hurt me. Not true at all. I mean, sometimes words can hurt them the physical. I mean, it, it, sometimes the, just a simple word can, can break somebody down, you know, especially if it's compiled, too, you know. I mean, if you have... One after another after another. I mean, it, it could wear somebody down. You know, I, I'm short in stature, so I always had kids picking on me. You know, this bullying thing. I wish this bullying thing was affected when I was a kid. I used to get picked on all the time, and not because I was a jerk, just because they couldn't. So, I learned, I couldn't, I might not be able to physically overwhelm somebody, but I learned how to do it verbally. You know, especially now, I mean, let's say I'm grown and I'm working as a construction worker, and I'm dealing with a bunch of wise guys. They all like to joke around, and sometimes they, they don't know when to stop, and they can push a little too far. So you, you have to learn how to defend yourself that way, too. So a lot of times, you know, I... I'd say something that would just end the fight right then and there. I mean, like Mike Tyson would be in the ring and only 13 seconds into the fight, they're down for the count. That's what I learned. And a lot of times I carried that over. I took it home with me, not just at the job, but I'd take it home with me. And it wasn't good, you know. A lot of times we, Susie and I would get into a fight back then and I would say things that... It ended the fight, but the fight wasn't over. That was just that was just a small portion of it. The war was to come. And then after that, you know, one gets into the other. After now, you know, pride comes into play, and we know where that goes. And it's all because of words, words. So I, I've learned through, through marriage how to dial that back. You know, my father taught me how to be a man, um, but my wife taught me how to be a gentleman. So, I owe a lot to her for that. And also then, you read the book, and it tells you that there's a lot. You know, when I started doing the research in this, there is a lot to be said about the tongue. I mean, I'm only going to do some of them, and I'm just going to rattle through a lot. It's mostly in Proverbs and, and, in, and in Psalms, mostly Proverbs. There's an overwhelming amount. I mean, I, I could never get it all in in just one sermon. I mean, we'd, we'd be here a while. And there's a reason for that. For instance, Psalm 34, 13, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Keep your tongue from evil and you leave lips from, you know, it is so easy. And our, our tongue can very easily show our inner self. It reveals our inner self. And when we start speaking things that are not nice, that's evil. James 1.19, know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, 
for the anger of man does not produce the righteous righteousness of God. That's something I've learned also. You know, whenever there's an argument or whenever something's going to start, I just take it all in. I just take it all in, listen, be slow to speak. Listen to what the person has to say. Be slow to speak, because now you can also choose your words carefully when you're slow to speak. When you're not slow to speak, they, you can just rattle off words, and sometimes you say something, you put something out there that you really, you might not have even meant it, but you put it out there and it's too late. Once it's out there, you can't reel that back. It's out there. For the anger of a man does not produce righteousness of God. You see, because a lot of times, the things we say, we, not be, we might not be angry but we can cause other people to be angry. And then it starts a snowball going downhill that gets larger and larger. See, this is the reason why God gave us two ears and one mouth. And in addition to that, he, he caged our tongue behind our teeth. It's, it's a brutal thing. It, 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 you know, it, it's funny how it could be used to worship God and say things, to say, I love you. It, it, it could be used to do really good things. But if not controlled, it can get out of hand. Proverbs 15, 1 and 2. A gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. The tongue of the wise makes knowledge appealing, but the mouth of a fool belches out foolishness. That's very true. When you see a situation escalating, as long as you can keep your cool and say things that are backed up with love, it can put a fire out. It really can. It's when you fight fire with fire that it gets out of hand and eventually it dies, but What's left is a scorched remnant of what was there before. Turn to page 1730 in your Bibles. That's the book of James. James had a lot to say about this too. He he had a lot of good things to say. We're going to go to chapter 3 and we're going to start with verse 2 since that pertains to the topic. For we stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bride the whole body as well. Now, if we put the bits into the horse's mouth so that they may obey us, we direct their entire body as well. Behold, the ships also, though they are so great and are driven by strong winds and still directed by a small rudder, whenever the inclination of the pilot desires. So also the tongue is a small part of the body, yet it boasts of great things. Behold, how great is a forest set aflame by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire. The very world of iniquity, the tongue is set among our members as that which defiles the entire body. And has sets on fire the course of our life, and is set on fire by hell. For every species of beasts and birds, of reptiles and creatures of the sea, is tamed and has been tamed by the human race, but no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil and full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father. And with it we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth came both blessing and cursing. My brethren, 
These things ought not be this way. Does a fountain send out from the same opening both fresh and bitter water? Can a fig tree, my brethren, produce olives, or a vine produce figs? Neither can salt water produce fresh. Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by his good behavior his deeds and the gentleness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. This wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly and natural demonic. For where jealousy and self, selfish ambition exist, there is a disorder of every evil thing. But the wisdom from above is pure, then peaceful, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering without hypocrisy. And the seed of whose fruit is righteous is sown by peace by those who make peace. I was going to stop, but this is all good. This is good stuff, people. This, this is stuff that we really need to focus on and, and to live our lives by. Not just read it, but live our lives by. And he talks about the rudder. The rudder is, like, especially if you see a kayak, it's just a small little blade. I mean, it's, it's real thin. And you say, how can that little thing steer? But it does. And you see these big ships. If you ever see one out of water, by comparison of the ship, it's so small. It really is. But yet it's able to steer this gigantic thing. Our tongues are the same way. Like I said, it, it can steer a conversation very easily by what comes out of it. And he gives the illustration of how it can be bridled, like the bit that goes in a horse's mouth. You can steer the, the horse of its direction by putting a small bit. It doesn't take much. What if that bit was the word of Jesus Christ? Right? What if we put Jesus Christ, his word, in our mouth? How much would that edify us and other people? Proverbs 17, 28. Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. That goes back to saying, be slow to speak. Right? Quick to listen, slow to speak. Because sometimes, you know, you can say something. You know, it's, in this case, it's better to, to keep your mouth shut and look wise. Right? Then open up your mouth and remove all doubt. Psalm 52 2. Your tongue plots destruction. Like a sharp razor, you worker of deceit. <laughs> These aren't good things. I mean, and, and every one of us has this. We have this potential. It's what we choose to do with it. You see, our words are very powerful. They can sometimes alter opinions very easily, right? So, for instance, um, Zechariah, that was the father of John the Baptist. So the angel comes to Zechariah and tells him that he's going to have, his wife is going to have a child. And immediately he shows that, how could this be? I'm in my age, I'm in my... So the angel says, you're not going to be able to speak. And the reason for that is simple. God knows the power of our tongues. He knows how influential they can be. And we're talking about John the Baptist. So there's something prophetic going to happen. So God, knowing how powerful our tongues and, and our words can be, doesn't want anything to happen prophetically to the future of what is to come. This is John the Baptist that's going to come. So he made him mute so it doesn't spoil God's plan. You see, God's plan is always perfect. And he takes care of it in any way he seems fit. In this case, it was making Zechariah mute. He was going to be sure that he was removing anything that can cause anything from happening that shouldn't have happened. See, that's the reason why 
God wants us to pray. You know, a lot of people, and I've said this before myself too, is God already knows what's going to happen. Why do we need to pray? Well, first of all, he likes the fellowship, right? He wants that fellowship with us. But the other reason is too, is because when we do pray, when we pray, we set forth something in motion that is powerful because of who it's going to. You know, God has stepped back because he gave us dominion over the earth. We have dominion over the, over the birds, the animals, and, and, and things, of that, all living creatures. We have dominion over. And God gave us free will. And the reason why he gave us free will is so that we can show our love to him genuinely. So with that, he gave us power by prayer, by going to him. God has the power, but we obtain it through him. So we pray to set forth the things as, as in heaven, so shall be on earth. On earth as it is in heaven. So when we pray, we set forth things that are heaven bound. It's extremely powerful when we pray. That, that the video, I chose it today because when we pray, we go to that throne room and the things we can accomplish. You know, when I was a baby Christian, I never understood the power of prayer. I never, I never got it. I just thought it was something that we had to do. But let me tell you, after praying and seeing results time and time again that are just unfathomable. I mean, our, our lack of seeing what God can do is our, our, our doubt and our of lack of faith that we could have. God can do anything. And sometimes our prayers are just too small to comprehend that. When we pray, we got to aim high. We got to, as high as heaven. That's how high we have to aim. And if it's God's will, he will take care of it. I mean, why wouldn't he? He loves us. And if our prayers are for, you know, genuine to show love towards other people and to do God's will, why wouldn't he answer our prayers? But that's the, that's the good part of the tongue, is how we can use it to bless God. You know, a lot of times, our tongue is not to be used for blessing God, but instead, we use his name in vain. How many times you say, you hear people, OMG, and they say it so flippantly. And here's the reason why. Think about this. God is always listening to us. You know, that'd be like, you know, you hear that little kid in the store, mommy, 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 after a while, you know? But think about that. You know, when we say OMG, yes. God saying, yes, you called me. When you mention his name, or some people say, oh, Jesus. But they don't mean it in a, in a prayerful way. They don't mean it, oh, thank you, Jesus. They just say, Jesus. Yes. Oh, well, you weren't calling me. God's always listening. Jesus is always there. He's there, right there for us. Always will be. Ephesians 4.29 Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Unwholesome talk. I'm going to go there. We have all said things that were unwholesome. And being a construction worker, it was my first language, not my second language. And again, I brought it home. I'd curse all the time. Sometimes at my kids. Sometimes at my wife. I recognize that now as a problem. You know, we just get so used to it that we don't think anything of it. But it's bad. It's, it's like setting a curse. I mean, when you say things to some people and it, it's used in that tone, you're, you're, you're cursing. The word cursing is you're setting a curse upon somebody. 
But you've got to put it in that context because then it has a whole different meaning. The good part is that was probably, and I don't know why, but that was one of the easiest things for me when I read that passage. Uh, that was one of the easiest things for me to give up as a Christian. I don't know why you would think it'd be the, the hardest because it's so repetitious. It's all the other things that I've, <laughs> I'm having as a Christian to learn to get rid of. But we, people don't curse. It, it's, it's a judgment of your character when up to other people sometimes, you know. And here's the better part. When there comes a situation when you could have inserted a curse, but you haven't, people recognize that. They recognize that. And immediately, they know something's up. They know either you're a Christian or you're just a wholesome person. But you're righteous when you do that. And people pick up on that. And eventually, <laughs> it got to the point where people would say, when they curse, oh, I I'm sorry. And I never once mentioned that. I don't, want, I, don't, I, don't like, I don't want to hear that. I, never once. But they picked up on it to the point where when they curse, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to curse in front of you. They're sensitive to that. They pick up on that stuff. Because in this day and age, it's so easy to insert a curse for anything. And when it's not there, it's like, wait a minute. But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Boy, let me tell you, when, when somebody comes to you with an issue and you're able to encourage them with your words and comfort them with your words, man, I tell you, that's like one of the most rewarding things you can feel in your life is when you feel like you've actually helped that person out. But more importantly, that's what we're to do as brothers and sisters. We are brothers and sisters. Take a look around you. We are brothers and sisters, and we need to treat each other accordingly. And even other people out there that may not be your brother and sister in Christ, you need to treat them that way too, because they may be one day. I'm going to end with James, once again, 5.12. But above all, my brethren, above all, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath. But your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may not fall under judgment. So do not swear either by heaven or earth. So how many times have we done this in the past where you're saying something and something, I don't believe you. No, I, I swear. Seriously, I swear. That's not good because... Now, whatever you've said in the past is, is meaningless because you didn't say you swear. Because this time you said you swear. So, in other words, this time you're really telling the truth. So all the other times you weren't telling the truth. Right? So then you have to keep saying, listen, I swear. Don't do that. It says, let your yes be yes, your no be no. This way you're a person, a righteous person, so that whatever you say, it is what it is. And I say that all the time. Ask my kids and my wife. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. So in other words, you tell somebody, okay, I'll, I'll be there. Sure, no problem. And that day comes like, I really don't feel like going. But you said yes. Yeah, I don't feel like going. You said yes. I hate that when you invite somebody or you plan something with somebody and they tell you, yeah, 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 sure. Or invite them to church. Hey, I'm doing a sermon this Sunday. Why don't you come? Yeah, of course, I'll be there. Sure, no problem. In the back of their head, no, I'm not going. But they'll tell you, oh, yeah, I'll be there. I'm coming. And you're thinking, cool, all right. And then you don't see them. Or they back out. That's not righteous. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. You tell somebody yes, you got to do it. I mean, of course, circumstances come up, you know. But for the most part, we, 
You gotta, you gotta stick to your word. Look, if your word, you can't be held accountable for your word. What do you got? Right? You're not righteous. So that you may not fall under judgment. You're not righteous. If your word is not yes or no and upheld, you may fall under judgment. That's what that means. Don't want that. Look, we're sinners to begin with. The last thing we need is more to add to our judgment, right? So folks, if you take anything away from this, slow to speak, think about your words, let them be uplifting, let it all be wholesome so that it edifies everybody, not just for the sake of saying things, and let your yes be yes and your no be no. Let's pray. Dear Lord, this is an issue every one of us have, Lord, including myself. Lord, we need you to help us with this. Everyone. Lord, we want to represent you in the best way possible, Lord. And I can't think of any better way than to offer praise of, of, with my prayers and my actions, Lord, that represent you in, in a way that you seem acceptable, Lord. But we need help with this. Have the Holy Spirit when, when we're saying things that we shouldn't be saying. Have the Holy Spirit convict us, Lord. Have the Holy Spirit tame us so that we can be slow to speak, quick to listen. Lord, help all our prayers be righteous in your eyes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.